everybody and welcome back. In this lecture we will talk about geography and climate of Russia. We will discuss some geographical factors that may shape Russian culture and I will provide some information about the most important Russian topographical features – cities, mountains and bodies of water. Russia is a big country. Its territory is over 17 million kilometers. Even after the collapse of the USSR, Russia is the biggest country in the world. Canada is the second largest country in the world. In comparison, the territory of Canada is around 10 million kilometers. Is Russia Europe or Asia? The Ural Mountains are a conventional boundary between the continents of Europe and Asia. 75% of the Russian territory is located in Asia, while only 25% is in Europe. Russia is not proportionally populated. European Russia contains about 77% of the country's population and only 23% of the population live in Asia. The Russian city Magnitogorsk is located in both Europe and Asia. The official motto of this city is the place where Europe and Asia meet. For centuries, the question of whether Russia is European or Asian has been debated both inside and outside the country. In 1918, a Russian poet, Alexander Bloch, wrote a poem, The Scythians. Scythians was an ancient nomadic people who populated the Eurasian steppe. It is a long poem written during a light intervention in the Russian Civil War, and the poem is about the role of Russia in the world as a shield between the East and the West. You are but millions. Our unnumbered nations are as the sands upon the sounding shore. We are the Scythians, we are the slit-eyed Asians. Try to wage war with us, you'll try no more. You've had whole centuries, we a single hour. Like serfs obedient to their feudal lord, we've held the shield between two hostile powers, old Europe and the barbarous Mongol horde. Do you consider Russia East or West? Before I share my opinion on this matter, I would like you to stop this recording for a while and think how you would answer this question. Do you consider Russia East or West? And why? I consider Russia both East and West. Interestingly, Siberian cities are much more European than the cities located in the western part of Russia. There are two reasons for that. Siberia has never been under the condition of serfdom as the western part of Russia, and Siberia is a place of political and religious exiles. Bearers of western values were exiled to Siberia. It's not a geography class, but I think it will be useful to know a few important for Russians geographical names. Take a look at this map. Here are the most important cities. Moscow, St. Petersburg, they both are in the European part, Yekaterinburg, in the middle of Eurasian continent, Novosibirsk and Vladivostok, these cities are in the east. The Volga River is in the west. The Black Sea and the Caspian Sea are in the south. And the Baikal Lake is in the east. Moscow and St. Petersburg are the most important political, economic, cultural and scientific centers of the Russian Federation. These two cities compete. I would like to tell you a little bit about some differences between the two. Moscow, Moscow is the capital of the Russian Federation. It is the biggest and the most populous city. 
Its population exceeds 12 million inhabitants. St. Petersburg is smaller. The Russians call it Peterburg or colloquial Peter. It is the second largest city in Russia and its population is over 5 million. Moscow is older. The first known reference to Moscow dates from 1147. St. Petersburg was founded much later in 1703, therefore it's almost 550 years younger. Before the revolution, St. Petersburg was the capital of the Russian Empire. While St. Petersburg has absorbed Western European influences, Moscow is viewed as a traditional Russian city. The pace of life in Moscow is faster and more businesslike. In St. Petersburg, people are less pushy. In Moscow, everything is important, urgent, and everybody works at lightning speed. Petersburg is smaller and people do not need to hurry. Moscovites accuse St. Petersburg of being depressing because the pace of life is too slow and maybe because of the climate. The climate in St. Petersburg is wet and windy. Moscovites think that it's unhealthy. I've been in St. Petersburg a few times and each time I caught cold there. Here are the most significant in Russian culture bodies of water. The most famous lake in Russia, the Lake Baikal. It is the oldest and the deepest lake in the world. It is at least 20 million years old. Its maximum depth is over 1600 meters. The Baikal contains more water than the North American Great Lakes combined. The Lake Baikal has been celebrated in several Russian folk songs. One of them is the Glorious Sea Sacred Baikal. In the past Russians called Baikal the Baikal Sea. The Black Sea is important because there are large ports and popular resorts. The city of Sochi is called an unofficial summer capital of Russia. The most famous Russian saying about the city is if I could read the cards, I would live in Sochi. Znal by prikup, žil by v Sochi. Initially coming from the preference card game, this saying shows the association of Sochi and its inhabitants with luck and an accidental fortune. The Volga is a major shipping traffic route, tourist ship route, and a source of electricity. There are numerous dams which unfortunately reduce the population of the sturgeon. Sturgeon caviar or black caviar is a symbol of wealth in Russia. But the majority of Russians, including me, do not remember the taste of black caviar. The Volga River is the national river of Russia. The river has a symbolic meaning in Russian culture. In literature and folklore, it is often referred to as Volga Matushka, Mother Volga. Take a look at this well-known painting of Repin, barge haulers on the Volga. Barge haulers are called burlaks in Russian. They were people who hauled barges upstream. This painting is a highly emotional condemnation of those who use such inhuman labor. All Russians know this painting, and although burlak profession doesn't exist anymore, every Russian knows the idiom to work as a Volga burlak, which can be translated as work one's fingers to the bone. One of the most prominent folk songs related to Volga is the song of Volga boatman. It was sung by Burlaks. You can listen to it at the end of this lecture. I believe climate has a great influence over human culture, so I would like to say a few words about it. Russia is the coldest country in the world, and Canada is the second coldest country. Most of Northern European Russia and Siberia have extremely severe winter. Verkhoyansk in Siberia has the Earth's widest temperature range with a record low of minus 68 and a record high of plus 37 Celsius. But again, Russian cities are much colder than Canadian ones. Yakutsk 
gets down to minus 64.4 while yellow knife its sister city has never got down to that level yet the lowest temperature recorded in yellow knife was minus 51.2 russians live in the coldest parts of russia while canadians mostly live along the u.s borders while there are some northern settlements in Canada, only a few thousand people live there, while there are millions of Russians living in areas Canadians wouldn't consider. Russian climate is very disadvantageous for agriculture, which caused food problems in Russia for centuries. The growing season in Russia is very short, six months compared to nine months in Europe. June and July are often dry, while rain may interfere with the cereal harvest in August. Droughts are frequent. In the past, droughts caused famines every 10-15 years. My parents are survivors of the last famine that happened in 1946-47. They saw dead people on the streets. And my mother survived only because my grandmother managed to move to the country where they grew tomatoes. Russia's short growing seasons required an extremely intensive burst of work, which might or might not pay off at harvest time. I believe this fact affected Russian people's mentality a lot. I observed that in comparison to Western people, Russians do not like to complete things. They prefer outburst of activity. Secondly, Russian peasants know that the only way to complete all necessary work in the time available is to pull labor. Even now, Russian culture is considered more collectivist rather than individualist. In modern Russia, people continue the Soviet tradition of subotniki. It's volunteer work organized for cleaning the streets, fixing public amenities and other community services. Agriculture and food supply in Russia is a very interesting topic, but it is beyond the scope of our course. So if you are interested, you can read more about it uh, in these works. They are available at UBC library. This concludes my lecture. I hope you learned something new and interesting about Russia. If you are interested in music, I have included the Burlak song at the end of this lecture, but it is optional, of course. And see you next time. <laughs>
Oh, <laughs> 